Saints Rams preview. Here we are. Thursday night football. The season on the line. OTB, Jacob Hester, T Bob Baybear. Let's go ahead, preview the game like only we can do. Saints getting ready for some Thursday night football, boys. Saints Rams tomorrow. In a lot of ways, this feels like, um, although, I, I, you know, if you've already made your mind up on this team, uh, that is what it is. Uh, but this Rams game, if you are still, you know, you're an optimist. You're, you're oh, hold on now. Hold on now. Two, two things can be true. All right, you can have your mind made up on this team. T-Bob, I think with a haircut. Very nice. You can have your mind made up on the team. You can, you can think... Look, you know, I don't know how I feel about Derek Carr. I don't know how I feel about Dennis Allen, Pete Carmichael, whatever. You can be one of those people. You can say salary cap situation, aging players, bad contracts, whatever. The fact of the matter is, tonight, the Rams game, next week, the Bucks game, week after that, Falcons game. The fact of the matter is, the season is on the line. The fact of the matter is, everything is in front of us. The fact of the matter is, we can still win the NFC South and say it with me. The fact of the matter is... The season is still in play. The postseason. Still an option for the Saints. So, unless you are a sneaky Falcons fan, unless you are a sneaky Bucks fan, you got to be rooting for the Houdets. You got to be involved. You got to be tuned in. You got to be glued into the game tonight. Prime time. Al Michaels. Thursday night football. Amazon Prime. Seven day free trial. Get it now. Get your Roku stick ready for prime time football. I'm all in with the last couple of games here. You know, I've been critical of this team. I've been critical of the franchise. I've been critical of Mickey Loomis. I've been critical of everyone in the stadium, except the Dome Dog Grillers. Griller, I just met her. Whew, I'm on fire this morning, ladies and gentlemen. I've been critical, but that doesn't change the fact that I want the Saints to win, and I want to go to the playoffs, and I want to host a playoff game, and I want to win the NFC South. Doesn't change that fact. Doesn't change the fact that I want Dennis Allen on the first flight out of New Orleans after the season's over. It doesn't change the fact that I think Pete Carmichael has trouble operating an elevator system. I don't think he understands the difference between stairs and an escalator. Okay? But I want the Saints to win. You're, you're bullish on this team. Uh, as we said, Jake made the very good point that draft picks are kind of out the window at this point. So you might as well win, make it fun, win the division, try to make the playoffs, try to maybe sneak a game. If you're going... No, that's what I just said. I just said that. You you said Jake, I, James. I just said that. Okay? That's what I said. Guys, again, it's easy to say. It's easy to say, I want them to lose because of the draft picks. Guys, the difference between 13 and 16, what are we talking about here? Okay? You got to want to win. I don't care how much you hate the team. If you hate the team, what's going on in your own personal life? You know, why Why do you have so much hate in your heart during the holidays? When you get me, though, to buy in that it's possible, beating the Rams is, is that's going to be the way to do it. Like, if you lose this game, even if you finish 9-8 and eight and you beat the Falcons, it'll be fun, and you beat the Bucs and you win the division. That's all great, but I'm still not going to give you any kind of juice going to the playoffs. But if you finish on a three-game win streak with a— Win over a Rams team that's playing better football right now, and you finish ten and seven. Well, that is, look that that is market improvement. I don't expect that. Big true, and big real. If they beat the Rams, if the Saints come out with a win tonight on prime time, I mean, hey, you don't have any choice but to say this team, the momentum is there. This is real. Now, here's the problem: the last couple of weeks, who have we faced? Panthers, Bryce Young. We know how bad they are. Uh, Tommy DeVito, Giants. Now it's looking like they might have been Fugazi too. So the Saints had two good performances against two awful teams. Huge step up in competition. I have said the controversial yet brave opinion. I think if you factor everything in, how the team is playing at the current moment, the game situation, I think this is the hardest game we've played all season. I think the Rams are the best team we have faced all season. But James, the Lions, first of all, the Lions were at home. At the Superdome. Second of all, how good are the Lions? Are we sure the Lions are better than the Rams? Are we sure? I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so sure about that at all. You know, the Lions could have easily lost to the Bears the first time. Almost blew the game against the Saints. Lost to the Packers on, on Thanksgiving. Lost to the Bears after that. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm telling you, I think the Rams might be better than the Lions overall. Not to mention 
It's a short rest, not to mention it's on the road. So this is probably the hardest game for the Saints. If we can go on the road, carry the momentum from the, from the Panthers game, from the Giants game, put in a good performance against the Rams, wow, I will be incredibly impressed with everyone involved. If we go out there, lay an egg, get dominated, yeah, I agree with T-Bob, where it's like, yeah, we could probably win nine games. Yeah, we probably could still win the division, but we kind of know who we are. You know, we have to rise to the occasion here. We have The Saints have yet, in my opinion, the Saints have yet to reach their ceiling. The Saints have yet to show us the best version of them. The best version of them was not last week. That was a good version. It wasn't the best. The best version wasn't against the Patriots. The best version wasn't against the Bears. The best version wasn't against the Panthers. Can the Saints show us their best version on short rest in L.A. against a super hot Rams team with a healthy Cooper Cup, a healthy Matthew Stafford, a, an emerging Kyron Williams, Puka Nakua? Can we do it? That, but 10-7, that's objectively really good. Like, especially given Dennis Allen's about. career record. Yeah, that, that's about where. So, so even yeah. despite all the bad, they have a chance to actually end up right where we maybe expect them to be. And for all of you keeping track at home, I, everyone knows I have an enormous, enormous regular season over nine and a half wins bet on the Saints. Biggest bet I've ever made in my entire life. They have to win this game for that bet to cash. If they, they lose this game, I lose that bet. They, they can only win nine games. So they got to win this game for me, for the boy, for the, for the fastest growing number one guy in New Orleans sports media. They have to do it for me. Be before the season again, I don't think it's likely, but it's possible. And if they're going to do it, Derek Carr is going to be key. And we yes. got to give credit. To the legend, DC4, baby. One of three. Well, he needs like 100-something yards, um, I believe, unless he already hit this number. Uh, one of three quarterbacks in NFL history to have 3,000 passing yards each of their first 10 seasons, joining Russell Wilson and Peyton Manning. Give it up for our boy Derek Carr, dude. Big shouts. Congrats, brother. Saints ring of honor. Clap. There we go. Well, Clap. Well, the thing is, look, if he needs only 100 yards, he should get that by the next three games. Yeah, like, it's not right? guaranteed, I, but he should. Wow. Um, Roasting. At Cook least him. then, uh, you know, yes, at least by the Falcons game. Like, surely the Falcons game could push him across the finish line. Although, I mean. Guys, can we talk about the Rams game? Don't let Dennis Allen tell you, but you must not have been watching that 210 last Sunday. Fellas. Okay, because that'll get it done. 218, excuse me. Um. Obviously, I'm being what many would consider uh, a jerk and being so wow. tongue in cheek about a this. Grinch, um, if you will. It is a Grinch, a Scrooge accomplishment. You know, if, if I wanted to be sincere about I it, I don't care about the accomplishment. I care about the Rams, Rams game. Let's focus on the seasons. Rams game. Uh, but I guess in the same vein, it's kind of indicative of a lot of the issue with Carr in general, which is the numbers don't always tell the whole story, maybe on what the quality of the quarterback play has been, which I don't care if Derek Carr throws for six passing yards this game. If we get the win, I don't care. The stats don't matter. This is the one game where we have to get a result by any means necessary. Make it happen. Now the, the Rams is a problematic matchup for us. They are going to attack our secondary Cooper cup unguardable a couple years ago. He looks healthy. Oh, and they can run it down our throat 30-something times with Kyron Williams. The Saints' defense looked good against Bryce Young and Tommy DeVito. Newsflash, this ain't Bryce Young, and this ain't Tommy DeVito on the other side. All right? Wandale Robinson isn't running routes. Okay? Miles Sanders isn't trying to run up the middle. All right? These are legit studs. Oh, and by the by, Aaron Donald's on the field. So... We're going to need an A-plus performance. This is not an easy game. We're four-point dogs right now. Might even tick up to four and a half by the time kick starts. This is not an easy game. A tough matchup. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. On the road, short rest, tough matchup. 
we're going to have to play the best that they, we have played all season. We are going to have to do something we have not done all season long. We're going to have to fire on all cylinders, A-plus across the board. We're going to have to get an A-plus on, on our final exam. Can we do it? God, I hope so. This all of these all of this season's heartbreak and frustration and turmoil and roller coaster and whatever. All of that, if it leads to us putting in the best performance of the season against the Rams on the road in prime time to save my nine and a half regular season wins bet, my God. I will be the happiest, I will be the happiest little bunny walking down Canal Street. Please, Saints. Please. Please. I fell for it because I don't watch the AFC West generally. So I didn't watch Derek Carr play for years and years and years very closely. And when I did see a matchup with the Saints, he played really well, actually. So I was maybe guilty of falling into those numbers and um, maybe was sold a bit of a bill of goods. Uh, I have spent a lot of time watching the AFC West in I my know. life. And I, I did have my own thoughts on how I this know. would play out for the Saints. This always blows my mind when people are like, I don't really watch the AFC North. I don't really watch the AFC West. I just watch fo football. I just watch the games. If the game is on, I'm watching it. Sunday night football, I'm watching it. Monday night football, I'm watching it. Thursday night football, I'm watching it. Games on Sunday, I'm watching them. I'm watching the games. I don't care what division it is. I don't care if it's Jupiter ver versus Uranus. Pause. I don't care. I'm watching the game. AFC West, AFC North, AFC South, AF oh, who cares? It's it blows my mind. I hear this all the time. I hear I hear people on ESPN, Fox Sports. I hear them saying the same thing. I don't really watch West Coast college football. Why not? I'm watching Big Ten college football at 10 a.m. I'm putting on a pot of coffee. I'm drinking four martinis out of whatever. It's not a big deal. Watching the 11 p.m. kick whack game. But that's why I'm doing what nobody else can do. Saints. But with all that being said, they still do have an opportunity. Now, yes. the Rams are playing incredibly well. Very Their last good. five yes. games, they're 4-1. and one. Their only loss, 37-31 in overtime the on the road against Baltimore. Yeah, yes. tough game. So they have put themselves, I mean, they were looking at a top five draft pick, and now they're yeah. in the playoffs. That's how they've turned around their season. You're 2-3 two and five, uh, two and three in your last five and wins coming in your last two after a three-game losing streak. But you're playing better. The Carolina game, that's just a bad football team, and it was ugly, but you found a way to win. There was yep. things in the Giants game that were... Matt Stafford, 12 touchdowns, no interceptions, I believe. He's on a run here. So, I mean, he he's playing at a elite level, and we all know how good he can be. Again, Cooper Cup, we all know how good he can be. He, seem, he has said... He's the most healthy. He's finally healthy. He's the most healthy he has been all year. I'm just knocked over my coffee cup. That would have been terrible. Improvements. You did look better in, in the positions that you just had to look better in. Offensive line and yeah. some of the protection things. Like maybe, you know, maybe that helped Derek Carr get to his two eighteen. Now you're going against a different team here with the LA Rams. Now the Giants got have actually a, a Thibodeau and Lawrence, they've got a good front. Yeah, decent front. You did a nice yeah. job. You have to have that kind of performance again because even though Aaron Donald's not having his typical year, he's still Aaron Donald, and he can still yeah. affect the game. <laughs> Certainly him against Cesar it's Ruiz. It's Aaron Donald against Cesar Ruiz. <laughs> I mean, what are we talking about? I don't care. But, and I hate to put this on Pistol Pete, but Aaron Donald, you can scheme around Aaron Donald because don't let him beat you, Pete. You know he's on the field. You know he's going to win the matchup. Get away from him. Isolate him. Leave him on an island. A lot of the times you see with people, with Aaron Donald, is they will leave him kind of free and just stay away from him. That way he's not impacting the game. Don't run at him. Don't, don't design routes where Derek Carr has to sit in the pocket for a while. We can neutralize Aaron Donald. We, you, you can't totally take him out of the game. But... He is going to be there. You know he's there. All right? There, there should be ways that we can attack the Rams that don't lure us straight into Aaron Donald's trap. What Aaron Donald's done statistically, my man has got to be licking his chops watching this Saints film this year. Uh, that's fair. It's completely fair. I mean, Cesar Ruiz is 
below the lowest graded starting guard. He's what did 68. it feel like when you were a? Uh, what did it feel like when you were? Oh, you knew it. A player, yeah, like you knew you, knew you were about to feast on on. And then what yeah. about like when you're an elite player and maybe you are having a down year? Do you think that guy's extra hungry to go like? Yeah, st- to get right, uh, stat, to get right game. Set, stat, stat, pad. Set, stat. What's going stat. on here, guys? Yeah, it's a get right. Let's game. get it together. Yeah. You know, like if you're an elite player and you're not playing to that level, well, I can do a lot of things to get back to that level. But you know it. Um, I can remember playing against the Colts on maybe like a Sunday night game. I forget which year it was. But I remember watching film and, and watching their linebackers, and they were undersized and they weren't fast. I'm like, <laughs> uh, this is going to bode well yep. uh, for us here. We are not going to have a difficult time running the football, and we didn't. We crushed the Colts that night in Indy, and you know it. Like when you're watching tape, you know that you've got advantages, and so the Rams are going to watch that tape outside of last week and think that they have major advantages. Yeah, they and do. So it's going to change their game plan. Because now they're going to think. <clears throat> I talked about this in a, in a video, I believe, this week. They can do that, but this is the chess match. This is where Pete and our coaches have to understand what they're going to try and do to exploit our weaknesses. So then we have to counter that. Like th- this is the adjustments I always talk about. This is that chess match between coaches where we we know we know the same thing they know. Right, We know that Aaron Donald is going to have an enormous advantage over our offensive line. Okay. We know what they're going to do. Don't let them do it. I know it's easier said than done, but at least throw wrinkles in there. At least try and try and do something. You know, if Aaron Donald dominates this game, it's that's on Pete. You know, that's on the coaching staff. Same thing with Cooper Cup. If Cooper Cup has 16 catches for 147 yards and four touchdowns, hey guys. Did y'all not know he was there? Hey, did y'all not know he was on the field? What's going on here? Bill Belichick is a great as an example of a guy who always takes away your number one, makes someone else beat you. If we take away uh, Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua beats us, okay, you know, all right, but don't let Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup beat you. You know what they're going to want to do. Take it away. You know what? We can win rushing four. We can win our one-on-one battles. Now we can play more coverage. Now we can try to confuse Derek Carr. So it certainly changes the schematics of what this game is going to be. And it's going to be a a tough game up front for the Saints. They're going to have to do exactly what they did last week against, again, a really good Giants front. Now this game is not at home. It is at SoFi. So you have to play with the crowd noise as well on offense. On the road. Cross country. Aaron Donald, cross country. Thursday game. Matt Stafford Thursday is not stupid. Bryce Young and Tommy DeVito. No, he's unfortunately, not. Unfortunately, even if he's not. I don't think the short rest, short rest is that big of a deal. All things considered. Because I think this is the perfect time to be on short rest where you're carrying a ton of momentum. You had a good performance. Get right back to it. You know, sometimes you're just feeling it. Sometimes you're, you just got to go on. Same with the golf course. Like when you're when you're in a groove and you're hitting the ball well, you want to just keep rolling. You want to just keep hitting. You don't want to like take a two hour break or whatever. You want to you want to keep the rhythm going, keep the momentum going. That's where I think the Saints are right now. That's why I'm not that concerned about the short rest. Matt Stafford, that he has been for his whole well, career. He's kind of been that guy lately. Yeah, yeah. You run into a hot team. Naku and Cup. And- yeah. Williams, a running back's been a stud. Yeah, yeah. Better running backs in the league when he's been healthy. Yeah, true. So it sounds like you think the Rams are going to win? They have the advantages. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. They have the advantages. But prove me wrong, Dennis Allen. Yes. Yeah. I would love, like, at least if you're going to be smug with me in the post game, you're smug because it's a win, which which makes it all a bit more palatable and go. I'd be totally cool with that. More smoothly. He seems Uh, to be using, like, the local media and fans as the outside noise that they're talking about and that you hear something. Yeah, he's been doing that all season. It's crazy. The Saints have been the most rabbit ears, whatever team, all season long. And Allen has been taking the local media, whether it's me, whether it's New Orleans football, whether it's whoever, and he's using them as the outside noise. He's using them as the motivation for this team. Which, you know, controversial move, but doesn't exactly harbor a great relationship with the team in the city and the media and all that stuff, but... Do what you got to do. I don't care. Do what you got to do to get results. Some of the players talking about, like he's trying to motivate them kind of thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I still think the Saints have been rather tone deaf in some of their uh, they have presentation this year. Yes, As you they have. We've covered that about selling the tickets because the economy yeah, was probably that was insane. The, the uh, most clear example of that. Well, yeah, I mean the team up. That's why people don't want to go to the games, yeah, right? Because because exactly. Saints fans they are need poor, money. Yes, even yeah. though they won't take free tickets. So yeah, it's, just, it's it's one of those weird things. It's one of those economy hey, things that the hey, common folk like us don't understand. Those tickets. We're a dollar, okay? Not free. Yeah, Loomis with a horrific like interview the there. Panthers we covered that. For 45 cents <laughs> for Panthers Falcons. The Falcons went to that stadium and lost. I know the Saints are going through some bad times, but that's hilarious. Okay. We're going to, we're not going to, you know, whatever. Here's the deal we are dogs. I'm not going to sit here. It, it would be disingenuous. If I sat here every single week and I predicted the Saints to win every single game before the season, did we think the Saints were going to go seventeen and zero? No. So I can't say, yeah, the Saints are going to win, go, you know, eleven wins, and and but then every week say Saints and a win, Saints and a win, Saints and a win, Saints and a win. I think the Rams win the game. I think the Rams are in a position to win the game. I think they're playing really good right now. It's on the road. They obviously have the advantage roster wise. They have the advantage coach wise. It is what it is. I'm looking at like a 28-24 game. Now, does that mean the Saints can't win? No. Does that mean I'm rooting for the Rams? No. I am rooting hard for the Saints. My entire day is going to be built around this game. My entire night is going to be built around this game. I want the Saints to win. I'm a betting man, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all know that. Man's is a gambler, okay? If I was a betting man... I would bet the Rams win 28-24. But is that where my heart is? No. My heart is with this team. My heart is with the Saints. I hope I hope to God the Saints win. Okay? We can. That's the most important thing. That's what I want to drive home to y'all. Forget the prediction. Forget what's supposed to happen. Forget who's the favorite. Forget the, the Vegas spread. We can win. How do we win? We got to be efficient. We got to push the ball downfield. They are going to score. We have to score with them. We cannot repeat. We cannot go three and out for our first four possessions and hope that it's seven to three at halftime and we can adjust. We cannot give up 21 early points and hope we figure it out at halftime and the defense pitches a shutout in the second half. We can't do that. We can't do nothing. We can't come out there and do and go three and out and three and out and three and out and then all of a sudden tack on 17 points in the fourth quarter. We will lose. If we have a horrible start and the Rams get up 21 nothing and we're expected to come back, we can't do that. We got to start fast. We got to remain fast. We got to be efficient. We got to utilize our playmakers. Chris Olave is going to play. He's got an inside ankle sprain, difficult injury to come back from. But he's going to play. How effective will he be? How hurt is he? I don't know those answers. Lean on Taysom. Okay? I don't want to see Jamal Williams and Alvin Kamara splitting carries. I don't want to see that. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean Alvin Kamara has to have 30 carries and no one else touches the ball. What I want to see is Kamara with that 16-ish carries. I want to see Taysom get his 6, 7, 8 carries. I want to see Jamal. Honestly, I don't care if I don't see Jamal play. Bottom line. I I don't I don't think he fits in. I think Tate oh he's a good short line, short yardage back, so is Taysom. Oh, he's our goal line back. Yeah, put Taysom in. Let Kamara do that too. I want to see Carr spreading the ball around. Get Rashid involved, get Olave involved early. Use your tight ends. Use the middle of the field. That's what I want to see. Utilize Kamara in the passing game. Screen passes. Keep Donald away. Quick releases. All right. You've got a great screen team. You've got a great short, short yard, intermediate route team. Chris Olave short. Let him get some yak. Alvin Kamara, match him up. Mismatch. Let him get some yak. Rashid Shahid, throw it to him quick. Let him get some yak. I don't want to see Derek Carr holding the ball in the pocket, taking sacks. I don't want to see that. Screens, draws, keep them off balance. Defensively, spoiler alert, Cooper Cup's really good. Let's try and stop him. Okay? Let's try and stop Cooper Cup. Kyron Williams is going to carry the ball 25 times. Let's try and not let him have 130 yards. 
That's what we got to do, ladies and gentlemen. Sean McVay is the man. I love him. One of my favorite coaches of all time. Maybe, probably second behind Kyle Shanahan right now in, in, my, in my world. Guess what Sean McVay does? Runs the football, play action. That's what he does. He's going to find ways to do that. He, that's his identity. Run first, play action offense. It always has been. We can do this. We can win this game. But we can't win this game if we go out there and do what we've seen before the season where we start slow or we allow them to get up big and then we try and make adjustments at halftime and we try and pitch a shutout in the, ha- in the second half, all that stuff. Can't do that. Look, we got to see something from the Saints tonight that we have not seen this season. We got to see explosive offense. We got to see good defense. We got to see four quarters of efficiency. We see all that stuff. We can go win a very difficult game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Upsets happen. It's our turn. It's our turn to play spoiler. The dream is alive. We win this game. We win this game. All of a sudden, yeah, we can win a playoff game. If we win this game, yeah, we got what it takes. Show us, New Orleans. Show us what you're really made of. Derek, this is the game. Derek Carr's got to win. Or at least play well. He's got to go toe-to-toe with Matthew Stafford. He's got to get himself into a shootout and prove and prove the money's worth it. We, we were praising Carr all this week. And so many comments said, we'll see in the Rams game. And I said, I agree. We'll see. This is where you got to, this is where you got to come through. This is why we went and got Derek Carr. This is the biggest game of his, of his Saints career. What will we see? This is an absolute season-defining moment for the New Orleans Saints. What will we see? I'm so excited for this game. I'm nervous. This isn't, you know, this isn't the season. More than likely, that'll be in Tampa Bay as far as, like, the season's on the line. But this, is, this carries a lot of weight. Because if you win this game, all of a sudden, like I said, 10 wins is in play. Your, your ceiling goes higher. And, and you kind of get into a better position as far as like in the, in the driver's seat for the South. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, get down there in the comments right now. Get down there. Let me know what you think. Break it down. You know I'll be down there replying. You know I'll be down there reading, giving my thoughts. Baby, 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 baby. Who's excited? Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Who that?